You say, uh, basically, the agriculture sector is where we have the largest, uh, uh, demographically, the population. The, the, the point that was being raised, for instance, by JG, which I think is very important, if you're thinking about sustainable development, inclusive development, this is where you have the most underutilized uh, le level of the highest level of underutilization of resources, human capital, in, human uh, resources in the sense of very low productivity, very low wages, incomes, and so forth. And you know, as you can see uh, from this, most of the countries, agriculture remains a bigish part between 15 uh, to uh, slightly more uh, of the uh, uh, GDP uh, uh, in, in most of the countries in Southern Africa. Um, but this is also where you have uh, uh, real serious productivity problems. And uh, so, so if, you want to, uh, if you want to get to the point about are there any surpluses and where they are, in fact, what are the sources of the outward flows, uh, this is a good candidate for seeing how those kinds of effects are most directly felt by the failure to reinvest in any sustainable productivity and accumulation process. All right. So we see, you know, compared to say mining, in which you have a very capital intensive uh, and all the related structural questions, you see a very direct uh, way in which we can try to uh, 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 use the analysis for advocacy in relation in terms of. Uh, redressing the problem. And uh, uh, so uh, many of these slides, I'm just throwing them out as just charts. I don't want to go into detailed analysis, but to use them to flag uh, some important things. So if we're doing a study of this in the region, we have to recognize that there are different levels to which agriculture is important. For example, Namibia, Botswana, <laughs> I'm looking at you. Uh, you know, agriculture is important and so forth, but vis-a-vis -vis mining and and, and, and the, the, the breadth of agriculture, depth of agriculture, you know, the issues, uh, uh, the, the, the context and the kind of issues that you need to think about are different from, say, countries uh, such as uh, Malawi, uh, which uh, have, have a, a much larger base, huh? uh, whereas Zimbabwe kind of sits in between with uh, kind of, although the industry in between part of it is going down, <laughs> you know, mix of mining industry and agriculture. So you, the structurally, the, the importance of agriculture and its effect, also in terms of linkages between agriculture and industry. Huh? There are variations that we would have to look at in the different countries, okay? And uh, 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 next is that, I just want to highlight one thing, that if you, if you do a sort of, uh, uh, try to relate the GDP, for instance, you know, it's not a satisfactory measure, but anyway, with, uh, say, the area that is cropped, in Southern Africa and Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa in general, you know, what we see is that you have a continuous effort of labor applied on the continent to farming, regardless of what happens with the production the output, whether it's uh, uh, induced by problems in relation to climate, to weather, variability, and so forth. So, so this is a, a, it's a, it's a problematic area. The standard issue is that you have low productivity and so forth, but it, it's important to recognize that without the kind of non-pharma industrial alternatives, you have a huge amount of labor applied <coughs> with very low returns and so forth. I mean, these kinds of questions need to be explored. Somebody was talking about contextualizing the studies to say what is different from IFFs in other countries. I mean, this what is different, for instance, compared to Brazil, Latin America, and Asia would be the way in which agriculture itself has continued persistently underperformed. Um, and of course, I've talked about the differences in value added between the countries, and I don't want to go into more. Okay, now, so coming to the, the, the first base, really, is that, uh, 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 you know, I know it's got a bit uh, too many numbers and so forth, but I'll just say some of the main points. Uh, basically, okay, so Southern Africa, if we were do, comparing, say, with the study of this in, 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 say, West Africa, right? This is a region where you have a lot, much greater extent of land alienation. And within the countries, right, you have different degrees. With the worst case, South Africa, Namibia now, Zimbabwe used to be until fast track, uh, and, and, and the other countries, uh, Malawi, Zambia, in between. But you do have a, a, a degree, a larger, relatively larger degree of uh, alienation in the sense of creation of farms in between. 
large plantations uh, and the peasant holdings in these countries. Uh, it's something that's interesting that countries like Zambia, for instance, Malawi, have a bigger middle that is emerging in the agricultural sector in terms of land holdings and what they produce and so forth. Uh, and, 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 and also, if we look at the, the, the point was being made about how the wealth was acquired, you know, <laughs> what kind of transfer, huh? transfers are involved in some illicit or, there's so, sort of many very legal ways of so-called large-scale land acquisitions in the, on the continent, but you know, legal, is it legitimate? Is it, uh, you know, is it, uh, you say, okay, we are advocacy, we can use terms like, is it fair? <laughs> we can use all sorts of uh, 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 important uh, uh, concepts to describe the fact that you have a trend that continues. Uh, more recently, we find the land grabs, in, especially in non, in, the, in the countries which are not the main settler countries. So Mozambique, Zambia, Tanzania, uh, 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 Malawi less, but to some extent, um, and going on to countries like in the DRC and so forth, you have a much larger land grab that's happening, okay? And, and the, the, you know, there's a whole lot of literature about the price of this, how much they paid for this, how it was done. So uh, in another way, we have to sort of uh, map out this kind of aspect of the ownership of resources and what it means in terms of transfers and the long-term implications of it. Uh, oops, is it the same map? Yeah, but you know, the, the fact, you see the, the whole point about the transfer of land and the concentration of land increasingly is that you, at the same time you have a much a declining area, uh, land area uh, per capita in, the, in, in most of these countries. Uh, in other words, you have a kind of an intensive, uh, not an intensification, an extensification of agriculture that's happening. Less land to more people, less arable land, okay? So you, you have a, a per capita decline in available cropped air land, land to crop, arable land, and even less inputs being used. And this trend is in fact not sustainable unless you, you have a, a way to deal with the, the inputs question that was being raised earlier on is, a, is an important thing. Um, and so it shows up, for instance, if you take cropped area. Now, the reason why I'm doing this cropped area per capita is that because most people are not in the formal circuits of income, wages and so forth, the bulk of in most of these countries. So what they're depending on is the product of the little areas that they crop for food and some surpluses here and there they, that they make in, in different kinds of cash crops and so forth. So with a decline in the crop, per capita crop area and so forth, you have a, a, a serious problem in terms of the, in fact, uh, 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 sustainability of the whole project. Now, yeah. Why am I going back? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So one of the, uh, if you look at, uh, so, so if we want to think about IFFs and so forth, and the last slide on the sectoral, what we discussed in the, the very last presentation is that uh, you, 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 uh, the, the, the trade aspect is very critical. And, and so some of these graphs are, going, are just going to give an overview of this uh, uh, dimension in order to, 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 to discuss where it happened. Uh, um, well, we can see that, uh, for example, the area of land cropped to fruits. In other words, the land concentration and the, uh, the, the shift in land ownership is actually shifting the use of land to a certain crops, many of which are primarily export crops. You know, for example, uh, fruits and melons, uh, fruits for instance, uh, although you, interestingly, you see tobacco declining, this is a South African uh, phenomenon of an area uh, shift between South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Malawi, a shift in the production structure. So what does that mean? In other words, we need to look at the trends to understand which are the main commodities that are actually be subject to the kind of problems that we, we discussed earlier on, uh, 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 tea and so forth. Uh, if we look at uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, quantity or, or production trends and so forth, I think we, we, we can see that cereals are dominant in terms of uh, overall quantity of the value, we can discuss that. Uh, and uh, we have four or five oil crops which are primary, and I don't want to go into digital, but, oh my, 
Why do I keep going back? Yeah. Okay. In terms of value, uh, uh, we, we can see that although a lot of land area is being put to cereal production, uh, because of the yields and productivity and so forth, in fact, it has the lowest value. All right? And this is where most of the small producers are concentrated, except if you, if you look at South Africa. Uh, so there's a kind of a division of labor, by the way, between certain kinds of export crops and food crops, between small and large farmers. And this is why agrarian structure uh, matters very much in thinking about not only the whole model, the sustainability and the, you know, the generation of surpluses and their distribution, but also in terms of the possibilities of flows, the channels through which the flows occur. Um, and another important area to look at is the fact that, you know, we, we often talk about agriculture having productivity having declined. Well, one of the major sources is the much relatively lower utilization of inputs such as fertilizers compared to, say, Latin America and so forth. And we also see that there was an increase until the 70s, somewhere just uh, when you find a general uh, shift in the growth uh, of the African economy in, in general, uh, a, a decline, but still much higher than we were before. Now, in fertilizers, most countries are importing these, and this is a, a big area in which one can think about what uh, the flows and so forth are. Oh, seven, okay. All right, I'm going to run. Now, the, uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, um, we have, all this amounts to a certain kind of an agrarian structure that we need to think about. Or, and to, uh, sti uh, style, in a stylized manner, we can think about a kind of a small farmer peasantry. I know you like, some of you like different terms, uh, uh, smallholders, whatever you call, but differentiated. And the emergence throughout most of these countries of what we can call a small to medium scale capitalist farms. Right? These are in Zimbabwe, A2, or indigenous capitalist farms, or they are different terms. And you have these large estates that began seriously to be created in the 1930s in the region, in South Africa, all, all these countries. Uh, sugar, tea, coffee, sisal, depending on where you are. And, and so you have these three sectors. And the importance of this is that uh, if you look at the, the value of output, uh, exports, and so forth, uh, the division of labor tends to conform in most cases with this division. And uh, similarly, if you can map out this in any country, right, for each country, one needs to track how is this financed and what, is, what are the circuits huh, that are involved within these sectors. For example, if you take uh, uh, very much the peasantry and so forth, contracts, contract farming, huh, contract is a big mechanism through which you have, for example, in tobacco, if you take a country like Zimbabwe, you have about 15 merchants that are involved in contract. Same in South Africa, in, uh, same if you take cotton, right? About 12 or so merchants, all of which are involved in different ways of indirectly tying production to credit inputs. And uh, at least two thirds of these would be foreign, okay? And so uh, foreign companies and so forth. And if you take, for instance, the plantations, if you look, uh, for instance, 25% of the GDP in Zim of the credit, formal, official credit in Zimbabwe, uh, is, uh, goes to contract, contract firms. And so this means that you have a dominance of certain merchants, uh, foreign merchants, and so forth involved. On the other hand, if you look at the credit, agricultural credit, a big part of that credit is going to multinational corporations, <laughs> the sugar corporations, and so forth, which uh, according to the rule books and so forth, the rules and so forth, uh, ought to be financing their production and expansion in different ways. These things need to be looked at carefully the, and, and quantified and so forth to, 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 to map the framework. Now, I wanted to, <laughs> you won't be able to see this. Now, you, if you really want to talk about this, uh, the political economy and the str of agriculture, so, so the real fulcrum we would hypothesize around which the extraction or the f outflows occurs is around the agro-industrial structure that is tied to, you know, so value chases, all these terms. But basically, who is buying, who is processing, uh, where, where does the export, uh, the wholesale uh, uh, occur? And now, if you take, uh, say, again, I will, in some cases, because the data, the, you know, if you take in Zimbabwe, for instance, you, 
typically, besides the, the peasantry, the trimodal structure that I get you, gave you on the level of production, you also have a kind of a trimodal structure at the level of buying commodities. So you've got large co corporates dominating the buying of certain cereals or the processing of, say, tobacco. You have medium-sized uh, actors involved in certain contractors, links to big uh, multinational processes like, you know, it's just the, so for example, BAT, it has got some front companies, let's say, companies associated with it that are involved as merchants in contracting firms, and they themselves also buy directly, and they more or less dominate what is locally processed. You have a few small, medium-scale processes of tobacco, and they are also involved uh, together with other companies in the smuggling of tobacco processed to South Africa and places like that. And, and so, so you've got many different layers in which you need to think about what's going on in terms of the flow, uh, uh, you know, from production to the processing and, and uh, the process to the marketing, the merchants, and so forth. I think uh, Walter will ex elaborate on this tomorrow. And obviously, uh, another important area, uh, the food import dependency of most of the countries has been increasing. Uh, okay, the numbers, this is in quantity and so forth. Uh, but the point is, is that uh, much of the food imports, you've got the aid co component, you've got the commercial component. The aid is a foreign aid component, commercial component. You've got the, 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 a, a huge component in which governments uh, are involved directly, supply, provide uh, tenders for imports of uh, foods, particularly during droughts, and these droughts happen so very often. And so you have a big cycle of, of uh, whichever mechanisms are used over invoicing, under invoicing, uh, 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 different types of mechaniz me mechanisms through which the food dependencies itself, I think, a very important uh, a uh, uh, channel through which to look at this. Uh, uh, per capita, well, we don't need to talk about that really. Uh, and the types of foods, are, you know, we're talking about uh, in, in most of the countries, if we want to go down the sector like wheat, uh, uh, and maize during droughts, and we're talking about uh, products such as rice and so forth. So meat, beef has become a big uh, source of, and beef <laughs> and chicken, for instance, this is where you have all the big problems about the corruption that is being discussed, the dumping of chickens from Brazil and all that, and what enables it. So, so the whole trade of the food imports uh, itself is a huge uh, uh, arena in which you have to think about what's what the f outflows may be, and, and how many time. And so, okay, and so unprocessed products. Uh, this is tractors. There are huge initiatives, including with the BRICS. Patrick, you might be interested in BRICS, not only China, e Asia, and so forth. All sorts of private and state-backed uh, programs to mechanize. And these it themselves are huge areas where you have problems of that. Uh, I'll finish very quickly. Um, Commodity prices, the terms of trade issue, one would have to look deeper into that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have time to go into that. Well, basically, uh, I didn't want to give you a total story about the sector in agriculture, but to highlight some of the uh, dimensions through which we can start thinking about it. For us, we're still at the stage of, fortunately, conceptualizing the study and, and clear, clearing it up. But certainly, uh, the scale and the spread of uh, IFFs and the scope of IFFs in agriculture. We need to think about that carefully. Uh, and which are the main sec con sectors, subsectors, and conduits of this within the agricultural sector. And uh, of course, uh, uh, some of the issues raised earlier uh, about the kind of mechanisms uh, can be revised. Thank you very much. Sorry uh, to take more than. That.